Everyone, this is David John Oates with you every Friday afternoon, of course, for the weekly reverse speed show, where we look at uh, all latest reversals, controversies, um, explore the phenomenon of reverse speech, and see what we can find. Um, today, this for the first hour, I'm going to be looking at some reversals on the moon landing, and uh, uh, what I found uh, 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 has uh, uh, shocked a few people. Um, I've released some uh, controversial reversals in my career, uh, JFK assassination, for example, and uh, which is which was the latest controversial one, and uh, uh, got absolutely uh, no negative comments about the JFK assassination at all, just full of praise for all the reversals I found, and uh, and most of my other reversals I find too get great feedback. But I did reversals on the moon landing uh, this week and uh, post them up on YouTube, as I always faithfully do, and uh, I was a little bit surprised at all the uh, feedback I got, uh, all the negative feedback. People were uh, 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 not not pleased with I, with what I'd found. So uh, so here we go. It's going to be a controversial program for the first hour, because uh, what I've got to say about the moon landing uh, may be a surprise to many people. Um, however, as I always do with reverse speech, I uh, simply go where the reversals take me and uh, document what I find and um, take it from there. Anyway, the moon landing is actually a very uh, significant to me because uh, it was the very first reversal I ever found in normal human speech. And uh, uh, this was, this was uh, so I'll play this, my very ever first speech reversal, okay? Uh, in speech, sorry, I'd found reversals in music beforehand, but my very first ever reversal in human speech. So this is Neil Armstrong's famous first words as he stepped onto the lunar surface. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And backwards he says, man will spacewalk. May ever spacewalk, may ever spacewalk. Now, to me, that's a very clear reversal, um, um, and its meaning to me was fairly obvious when I found it. Um, uh, my thoughts at the time were, um, okay, man will spacewalk is an expression for humanity's hope to be walking into space. That's our destiny, to walk into space, to become a space planet. Um, and, uh, however... Um, some other people heard this reversal and they said, ah, man will spacewalk. That means that Neil Armstrong didn't actually walk on the moon. Well, that's not necessarily the way you interpret that reversal. I can say I'm going to have dinner dinner tonight. It doesn't mean I didn't have dinner last night or the night before. I'm just saying I'm going to have dinner tonight. And so man will spacewalk. We will walk into space. There uh, seems to be no con controversy around that reversal. That was always uh, fairly apparent to me when I found it. Was uh, was the uh, destiny of the human race to uh, walk into space. Anyway, so um, uh, so let's have a look at some of the reversals I found on the uh, lunar. Surface. Uh, where, 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 where will we start? Now I tell you what, we'll start with Neil Armstrong in um, in his last interview that he gave in the year 2011, and this was actually, uh, ironically enough, to an Australian um, interviewer. And uh, so let's so let's begin. So here's the uh, here's the first reversal on Neil Armstrong's 2011 speech. So let's run this forwards. The moon has no atmosphere so you're flying in a vacuum and the gravity is much lower okay. so the characteristics of a flying machine in that environment are very different than they are here on earth and uh, this reversal says uh, you land that mission now Okay, so uh, that seems to be a fairly logical reversal. Um, as he's uh, talking about talking about flying across the uh, um, um, lunar surface, uh, he uh, he thinks what he did, and he landed the mission. Okay, there you go. Seems to be fairly straightforward. Well, yeah, let's uh, run that one again. The moon has no atmosphere, so you're flying in a vacuum, 
and the gravity is much lower. So the characteristics of a flying machine in that environment are very different than they are here on Earth. And uh, you land that mission now. So, uh, fairly a straightforward uh, uh, congruent reversal. Um, he's giving us some more information in his reverse than he did in his forward. So that's a... That's a fairly straightforward. Okay, so uh, here's the next one. Let's run this one forwards. Those variations and be able to feel comfortable in flying the lunar module to uh, in, to the surface of the moon in, in the actual condition. And uh, this one says, it was the first. It was the first. It was the first. It was the first. And it was. It was the first lunar mission to actually land a man on the moon. So it was the first. So once again, it's a congruent reversal. It is supporting his story. Okay, and uh, here's another one. All right. Do you think you and your guys are ready? Okay. Oh, what's happened? Hang on, my software stopped playing. All right. Do you think you and your guys... Oh, okay. Look, I got a little fault with my software here. All right, let's uh, just uh, open it up again. That's uh, fairly easy to do. Um, so, uh, okay. So here we go. Are do you think you and your guys are ready? Are, are you? Are, is there anything that you're really concerned about that you you don't think we understand well enough that you we can't go on? And so I was involved in those discussions and. And this reversal says, and I will thank you. And all will thank you. And all will thank you. Sorry, no, and all will thank you. A double L. And all will thank you. And all will thank you. And all will thank you. So he's thinking about it, about the gratitude that he would receive from an adoring uh, public to uh, um, uh, and thank him for his mission. All right, so here he is um, talking about the uh, Saturn V rocket and how what a shaky ride it was. Uh, out of the reflected sound, it gets pretty reasonable. A very shaky ride in, the, in that particular rocket, the Saturn. And here he says, we looked sick. We looked sick. We looked sick. We looked sick. So once again, it's another congruent reversal. It's giving us extra information. They looked sick as uh, they uh, were taking off in the rocket. So congruent reversal um, uh, once again. Um, okay, so now here he's talking about... Um, uh, oh, just... just uh, oh, well, let's just run it. Of diverting our attention away from our primary responsibilities because problems usually occur when you least expect them. Yes. And you can't get complacent. You have to keep paying attention. And we were very determined. And this one says, it helps get sealed in your work. What you have to get sealed in your work? What you have to get sealed in your work? Yeah, so, you know, if he works, you know, it helps him, keeps his mind occupied. So, uh, so once again, it's a congruent reversal. Uh, now, when you find incongruent reversals and someone is lying, uh, it's very obvious in the reversals. Um, uh, you'll get contradictory reversals, um, saying different things to what they're saying forwards. Um, for example, the JFK assassination that I did, uh, did uh, two or three months ago now, um, uh, the, the reversals were very obvious and very apparent uh, that lies were being told. Um, and when someone is lying, it's very obvious in the reversals. But when they're telling the truth, reversals will either say the same or similar things or give extra information um, about the uh, topic they're talking about forwards. Uh, and so here we have a reversal uh, um, uh, where... Uh, they, uh, when they uh, were ready to leave the moon, um, uh, 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 one of the uh, booster rocket switches had broken, and no, the main booster rocket switch had broken, and so they were in a real dilemma. Um, and uh, so, through uh, through ingenuity, they got a uh, they got a felt tip pen and 
put it in the uh, in the socket and, and, and use that to keep the switch on uh, for the booster rocket. So here they are talking about uh, this uh, problem they're trying to troubleshoot. But he banged into the circuit breaker that controlled the SN engine that got us back in, in, into orbit. Uh, I think that uh, that when we recognized that, we thought uh, it, it probably will hold, but uh, maybe we better see if there's a way to increase our chances of, uh, of, of making sure the circuit breaker wouldn't automatically disengage. So we took a piece of a, of a uh, plastic pen, uh, a magic marker kind of pen, and uh, made a made a little crutch to hold it in place. Like that. And here he says back was, "Look, we'll get the solution." Nope, we'll get the solution. Nope, we'll get the solution. Very clear reversal. Nope, we'll get the solution. And once again, that's a congruent reversal. They're troubleshooting a problem. And Neil Armstrong gives us extra information. Look, they get the solution. I will get the solution. Okay. If you want to call in and talk to me about these reversals on the moon landing, uh, you can call me on our toll-free number in the United States, which is 844-769-2944. That's 844-769-2944. Two nine four four. We'd love to hear you f- hear from you. Um, if you've got any feedback to give me on these Neil Armstrong reversals, um, okay. So let's. Uh, okay. So here he is uh, still talking about the uh, booster rocket switch. Well, I'm, I'm. You know, I really think that had we not done that, we'd still been yes. all right. But uh, it was just insurance. It's nice to get a little insurance. Yes. And uh, here he says we were wanting that knob. In reality, no. no. Yeah, speaks for itself. Have a whiting the knob. Well, the switch, knob, switch, same same thing. So, uh, um, okay. And now he talked about uh, how when he was landing the spacecraft, the uh, the uh, uh, landing spot they'd chosen was too uh, was too uh, rocky and not suitable. So. Uh, Neil Armstrong uh, uh, took over manually flying the craft, um, and he said, like a helicopter, until he found a new landing spot just before they were about to run out of fuel. So here we go. We've been descending uh, about 2,000 meters a minute. We're now down to uh, about below 1,000 meters in altitude. Uh, you see, my my uh, com- my computer tells me that we're it's taking us to a landing just on the right side of that big crater on the up in the up left hand corner. The slopes are steep and the rocks look very large, the size of automobiles. Certainly not a place that I want to land. So I took over manually from the computer, the autopilot, and flew it like a helicopter on out to the west to try to find a smoother, more level landing spot. And here he says in reverse, I boosted our burn in this. I boosted our burn in this. I'm sorry, I boost, not boosted, I boost our burn in this. 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 In other words, he burned the engines longer than that, than, that, than they had planned because he had to fly to... Uh, find a good landing spot. So once again, it's another congruent reversal. He's uh, giving us extra information uh, about his tail. Um, okay, so, all right, so let's go and actually have a look at them on the moon itself, okay? And uh, um, a lot, now before I do that, uh, I, I want to play a reverse on Buzz Aldrin in an interview that he gave... Ooh, a few years ago, I think. Uh, I'll play this one. Okay, here, here we go. There's electricity behind that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I want to stick my little finger. Here's a ballpoint pen, but that's metal. Mm. Okay, we did have a felt tip pen. It wasn't illegal, but somehow it wasn't on the, the list. And this reversal says LEM, which is the, uh, which is the lunar vehicle. LEM set them there. Lamps that them there. Lamps that them there. 
Lamb's not the man. And so he's once again giving us extra information. And when he's talking about the broken switch again... So, anyway, Houston um, thought a minute or two, and then they said, well, look, uh, we're going to look over all the circuits, see if we can get around that circuit breaker uh, if it can't be activated. And this one says, we've seen a noose with dilemma. 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 And they were in a noose. If they hadn't fixed the switch, they would have not been able to leave the lunar surface. So, uh, so there's two very interesting reversals. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go down and uh, look at them on the actual uh, surface of the moon itself. Uh, and uh, here, uh, you know what I look, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, well, actually, I, I, I these actually aren't in order of time, so I'm just going to pick them out randomly. Uh, this is Buzz Aldrin uh, descending, uh, about to descend uh, out of the lander onto the surface of the moon. Get up my suit 30 at this stage. And here he says, needed this helmet. Needed this helmet. Needed this helmet. which is a totally true, true statement. Uh, he needed a helmet on the surface of the moon. You can't actually walk on the moon and take your helmet off. You would slightly die. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just uh, pick these up as they are in order on my on my on my uh, software here. So uh, here's another one of Voldren. To the upper surface of the soil, in about five or six inches of bay, it uh, breaks loose and. Uh and here he says uh, and I get your word 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 yeah so he's hearing him he's receiving uh, signals from Houston and once again it's a concurrent reversal look I'm not wanting to upset anyone here um, uh, I was actually surprised that this has turned out to be my most controversial video yet. <laughs> I, I thought the JFK assassination would be controversial, but I just got the wonderful feedback, all, all positive feedback from the uh, JFK assassination, but I've got all negative feedback from the lunar landing. I, it took me by surprise. I, was, I wasn't expecting it. Anyway, um, so, let's, so, let's, so let's continue on, all right? And uh, here's, the, here's the next one here. The... Uh the blue color of my boots have uh, completely disappeared now into this um, I don't know exactly what color to describe this other than bayish uh, cocoa color and uh, this reversal says but there's dark see the dust but there's dark see the dust but there's dark see the dust uh, once again, another congruent reversal. It's dark on the moon, but he saw the dust, and of course that's what he was talking about forwards. He was describing the uh, describing uh, the stuff that he was hearing. Okay, uh, here we have the next one. Let's uh, run this one forwards. Neil is now unveiling the plaque. Okay, Neil is now unveiling the plaque, and he says, "Off from your limb." Off from your limb. And the plaque was on the lunar module, the LEM. And here's Neil Armstrong talking next about how he got the plaque from the LEM. For those who haven't uh, read the plaque, uh, we'll read the plaque that's on the front planning gear of this LEM. Okay, so uh, uh, he confirms it's on the LEM. And let's play that reversal again off from your LEM. Off from your LEM. So he's telling a true story. The plot was on the limb. And uh, I, I hope it's uh, becoming apparent to those of you who are listening. I know some of you are probably quite sceptical about my findings, and I, and I uh, am acutely aware of that. Um, but all I can tell you is I've analysed the tape, and they're all congruent reversals. Uh, uh, now, some people say uh, they were brainwashed, and they actually believe what they said. 
look, I haven't done any research into brainwashing, so I can't really comment, but I would imagine if someone has been brainwashed, um, the truth is still going to come out from those deep metaphors, from the deep collective unconscious. And, uh, and um, um, uh, if uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were lying, uh, they would get reversals that were contradictory to their lie. But we're not. All these reversals are supportive of their tale. Okay, here's one here. Not too sure exactly what this one means, but uh, let's uh, play it forwards anyway. And here he says, open this, develop. I know, develop it, sorry. So, uh, I don't know, he's talking about the camera. I'm not too sure. Develop the film. Um, maybe he wants to see the shots of the surface. I don't know. But anyway, um, but it's not an incongruent reversal. It's, um, once again, it's a, it's a congruent reversal that is uh, adding, uh, adding extra information uh, to his story. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next one. Here we go. Uh, right in this area, there are two raiders. Uh, the one that's right in front of me now as I look off in about the uh, 11 o'clock position from base to back. And uh, this one says, yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. So, another congruent reversal. So, look, you know, what can I say? I, I just document what I find. Um, you know, I put my headphones on and start analysing the tape and find the reversals. Um, there's never any sort of uh, um, 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 a motive to uh, uh, find a particular point of view. So here we are. Take these as you will. Um, but uh, so far, we're all of uh, the Moonwalk reversals are congruent, and we'll be coming back right after the break to play some more. Thank you. See you in a sec. Do you struggle with your weight? Are you frustrated or discouraged? Think you've tried everything to lose weight? Tired of weight loss products that promise results and don't deliver? There are 12 main reasons why you struggle with excess weight and have a difficult time losing it. From overeating to hormonal imbalances and underactive thyroid, even sleep problems, and even dieting itself. The truth is, the 12 causes of weight loss problems are all addressed by one product, Royal Velvet. You, yes you, can join the scores of Rinse listeners who have stopped the madness and no longer struggle with weight issues. Maybe you've heard them talk with Jeff about their amazing transformations on his show. Simply go to RoyalBubbitNow.com, click on the weight loss section, and learn the truth about the real reason obesity is a deadly epidemic that you can avoid. Then click on the Rinse icon in the upper right-hand corner, and you will be on your way to a healthier, slimmer, more youthful you. RoyalBubbitNow.com. Your life will never be the same. If you've been listening to this program for any length of time, you'll know that Fukushima, the greatest calamity in history, has now, as I've been warning since 311, killed off virtually the whole North Pacific Ocean and especially up and down the entire West Coast. The radiation is migrating inland and is moving across the entire country. There's only one proven defender to radiation exposure, the brilliant Chernobyl-proven discovery of Dr. Michael Kiriak which combines the four most potent and powerful algaes on the planet, imported to the U.S. and known as Bio Superfood. I've taken Bio Superfood every day for several years now and want you to do the same for your sake and the health and safety of your family and loved ones. Take the banner at the top of Rents.com and prepare to learn how to save your life. Tuned in uh, to the show. We are looking at reversals on the moon landing. 
the Apollo 11 mission uh, to be Pacific. Uh, look, before I go on, I've got a few little announcements I need to make. Uh, um, uh, my latest book, Unveiling the Truth, is now out. Um, uh, all of those who ordered your books, they will be shipped out uh, straight after the show, actually. Um, I've got a back seat full of books and other products. It's a, a chock-a-block full. So, uh, so you know, we'll be going to the post office after the show and get all those shipped out. So uh, they'll take about a week to uh, make the journey from Australia to America and England where, where most of the orders are from. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, I've got a new training class scheduled to start, and that's in November the 19th. Uh, it's, it might sound like a long time away, but it's really only uh, only a couple of months. Um, had five students sign up for it already. Um, I'll be cutting off at 20. Um, so if you're really serious about reverse speech and then learning how to use it, then I uh, invite you to join the class and uh, and take training. That would be fantastic. So, all right, okay. So let's. Uh, let, oh, and this is thing I should have told you. If you want to sign up for class or even get one of my books, uh, well, the books you can go to the website reversespeech.com and to sign up for class, uh, you can call me after the show on my American number, which is 503-568-7077. That's 503-568-7077. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to more reversals from uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong on the lunar surface. Okay, so here he's talking about uh, walking down the ladder, uh, um, out of the lander, onto the surface. Now I want to uh, back up and partially close the hatch. No, he says, I'm going to back up and partially close the hatch. And backwards, he says, the backup. The backup. The backup. The backup. So once again, that's a congruent reversal. Uh, he's going to back up. And uh, backwards, he says, the backup. So uh, he's using exactly the same... Uh, words backwards as he did forwards. And then as he talks about actually stepping down the step. Looks like the uh, secondary strut uh, a little thermal effects on it right here, Neil. Yeah. And here he says then I step. Then I step. Then I step. Then I step. See, that's an obvious congruent reversal. I am um, uh, he's saying exactly the same thing backwards as he is forwards. Here, let's uh, let's uh, let's play the uh, forwards again. Looks like the uh, secondary strut uh, a little thermal effects on it right here, Neil. Yeah. Okay, and then I step. Then I step. Then I step. Then I step. So uh, once again, giving us extra information about his story. As he steps down the ladder, he says backward, then I step. Okay, let's look at some of Neil Armstrong on the moon. And we'll just run down these in order. Here he is receiving a phone call from President Nixon. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. That would be an honor. And when he says that would be an honor, he says, and I need the wit. 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 Yeah, he wants to have a little bit of wit when he talks to the president. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, once again, uh, giving extra information about the story. All right, here we have another one. Official trajectory upward. German. Where most of the authority of the uh, particle down like the terrain. And here it just simply says, look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Yeah. All right. Look, for those of you who don't believe in the lunar landing, I know these reversals are, are, are not going to sit well with anyone, and, uh, you know, I'm not sorry about that. I, I uh, wish I could uh, make reversals fit what everyone thinks. Um, but um, but uh, I, I hope you can see that these reversals are all congruent. Uh, now, look, I don't know how to address the moon conspiracy theories. Um, you know, I've seen them all. I've seen the, I've seen the documentaries. I've seen all the arguments, and uh, and I've seen NASA's response to the arguments. And 
NASA in the, in, the, in our documentary they put out uh, went through um, all the uh, um, um, uh, skeptics uh, uh, points about why we didn't land on the moon and uh, they all lined up they all lined up so I don't know what to tell you um, uh, there was another reverse speech analyst who came out with an analysis a few years back that said we didn't go to the moon based on her reversals but I analysed her reversals and they were all uh, uh, what let us say a borderline not good not not documented well and so I've got a rebuttal on my website about that one so um, go to go to the site and uh, and look at the uh, look at the uh, moon landing reversals and also on the website are pictures that the NASA have taken from the lunar or- orbiter of the moon landing sites and you can actually see the land is still on the surface and footprints and uh, scientific instruments um, um, on the photos of the landing site. So very obvious um, that uh, you, you know, all the all the evidence is still there. Uh, those uh, reversals are uh, not reversals, sorry. Uh, those pictures are also up on my website. So uh, go and have a look at them and uh, tell me what you think. Okay, so uh, let us uh, let us uh, move along to um, uh, where looking at Neil Armstrong on the moon itself and uh, I hear he's talking about uh, setting up a camera Neil Armstrong uh, getting ready to move the TV camera now out to its panorama position and I have the insulation off the Mesa now and Mesa seems to be in good shape okay so he's talking about setting up the camera and he says back would the camera find a show with me the camera find a show with me so you know, yeah, the camera's going to uh, film Neil as he uh, walks on the lunar surface. The camera find a show with me. So, uh, so uh, look, what can I tell you, folks? There's not one single incongruent reversal here. Um, every reversal is confirming their story. Now, I don't intend to attack or to attack the arguments of the moon naysayers, because quite frankly, I don't have the scientific knowledge uh, to be able to uh, uh, tackle them all individually. Someone wrote me a very nice email um, uh, last night, which I did appreciate. Um, and some uh, took issue with with the reversals that I had found, and uh, I appreciate the uh, the uh, the pleasant tone in the in the email. That's how intelligent people should communicate. If we have disagreements, we sit down and we talk about it. And uh, he, he 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 asked a valid what what is probably a valid question is uh, how can the astronauts' the spacesuits withstand the extreme extremes of temperatures on the moon from minus two fifty to plus two fifty. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I know the space suits protect them in space when they're doing spacewalks around the space station. So uh, if they can protect them in space, I'm sure they can protect them on the moon as well. Uh, however, not being a manufacturer of spacesuits, I can't comment, can I? All right, okay, so we're looking at uh, at some more. Uh, here's another one on Neil Armstrong. Uh, you're on, you've got three more steps and then a long one. And uh, here he says, and I'll remember space. The wall in the space. The wall in the space. The wall in the space. Uh, yeah, and he will remember what happened when he went into space. I'll remember space. This, uh, this experience will uh, stay with him for a lifetime. Uh, so uh, that seems to be uh, fairly straightforward. And here's Neil Armstrong again. Okay, your purse is, looks like it's clear and okay. The toes are about to come over the spill. And here he says, wife, feel the vomit. Wife, feel the vomit. Wife, feel the vomit. Wife, feel the vomit. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess he's right about his wife. She was probably so sick that she would have vomited it up with all the worry and concern about the moon landing. So once again, we have another congruent reversal. Um, and uh, congruent reversals are what we are looking for when determining truth and error. And so, uh, uh, yeah. So here we go. This is what I found on the moon landing, folks. Not a conspiracy. But the truth. So I don't know. Give me a call, eight four four seven six nine two nine four four. 
844-769-2944, toll-free number in the United States. Would love to hear your opinion on this. Okay, here's a transmission from Houston. Neil, this is Houston. Based on your camera transfer with the LEC, do you foresee any difficulties in SRC transfer over? And here he says, you'll free this delay. You'll free this delay. Uh, yeah, and whatever the delay was, uh, Houston had confidence that uh, they would free it and 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 move past it. Okay. So. All right. Here we have a couple of reversals from um, some other astronauts. Now, this is from the. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the video now. Um, so, and but I don't know which ones they are. So here's one of the. Uh, lunar astronauts talking about his trip to the moon because I don't accept the Bible as a gospel of anything except the historical record but we did go to the moon you bet your sweet ass we went to the moon you did, we did go to the moon a backwards he says inevitable saga the inevitable saga the inevitable saga the inevitable saga uh, yeah so it was uh, it was a journey it was an adventure and he's relaying the story of the adventure. And it was inev- inevitable. Mankind is destined to uh, walk into space. Okay? And here we have another one where one of the astronauts is talking about uh, flying through the Van Allen belt, um, which uh, many moon theory conspiracists will tell you is impossible. Uh, we can't fly through that belt. We would never survive the radiation. Um, so uh, here's, here's uh, one astronaut talking about flying through the belt. Now, what that all meant, I don't know, but it wasn't the kind of it wasn't the kind of radiation that gave us a problem of any kind. But you could see it. You could close your eyes and just you could see these things shoot by. We all saw it. And uh, here he says, "You see this? You see this? You see this? You see this?" So once again, a, another congruent story. Um, all very interesting stuff. Uh, okay, uh, so let's have a look at a uh, look at look at a couple other reversals I've got here. Some miscellaneous ones on the on the uh, moon controversy. Following this uh, separation maneuver on the backside of the moon, uh, we made a descent orbit insertion, which is a slightly over seventy foot per second maneuver. And this reversal says NASA built the vessel in a house. Uh, well, I don't know what was built in a house, but certainly a hangar. But uh, reverse speech does use uh, does use the words like that to uh, to describe uh, interesting concepts. Um, uh, now I've got some other reversals, and I can't see them at the top of my head. I wonder where they've vanished to. Huh, okay, all right. All right, look, they're the, uh, they're the main uh, reversals I've got on the moon landings. Uh, now, I know there's some more. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, quickly go to another directory here and uh, pull out some more reversals. Okay, like, for example, here is, uh, here is Walter Cron- Cronkite. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift up on Apollo 11. Sorry, this is not Walter Cronkite. Or maybe it is. And he says, Apollo 11, not perfect. Ah, it sucks. Apollo 11, not perfect. Ah, it sucks. Apollo 11, not perfect. Ah, it sucks. And again. Apollo 11, not perfect. Ah, it sucks. And yes, Apollo 11 wasn't perfect. They were plagued with, uh, with the problems and issues as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, transverse and make their uh, journey to the moon. So, all right, yeah, no, those uh, those are all the uh, those are all the reversals I've got on the on the moon landing. So, I don't know, folks, make up your own mind about it. But um, uh, all I can tell you is the reversals I can grant. Uh, the astronauts are telling a true story. Uh, were they brainwashed? Do they actually uh, do they actually believe it? And they didn't go to the lunar surface, but they were brainwashed with NK Ultra or whatever other uh, nefarious programs are around uh, to actually believe the lie. See, I don't. See, I can't accept that. 
uh, if if they were lying, the reversals would be there to say that they were lying. Uh, but they weren't. They were telling the truth. Anyway, so those reversals are all up on YouTube. Uh, they're also on my website. Um, go and have a look. Listen, listen to them again. And, uh, and email me. Tell me what you think. Uh, uh, controversial analysis and uh, one that I wasn't expecting, uh, quite frankly, um, to have. Um, uh, so there we go. And let's look at, uh, uh, and uh, let's go back again and uh, look at Neil Armstrong's uh, famous first words on the lunar surface, which uh, are always uh, wonderful for me because uh, they are the, uh, that's the uh, very, uh, very first uh, reversal that I ever found. And, uh, um, and, uh, uh, so, and those of you who follow my career will know that I have, uh, I do play this, uh, reversal quite frequently. Uh, A, because of the historical significance of the reversal, and also because it has a particular, uh, uh, soft spot to me, because it was the first reversal I ever found in uh, normal human speech. So here it is again. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And of course, backwards, man will spacewalk. And here it is, forwards and backwards, forwards. That's one small step for man. And backwards. Yeah, so there we go. Um, and we'll spacewalk. We will continue to move into the stars.